What is worldview? According to Collins Dictionary, a person's worldview is the way they see and understand the world, especially regarding issues such as politics, philosophy, and religion. How did the author's worldview influence their literature? George Bernard Shaw was an enthusiastic atheist. I'm an atheist, and I thank God for it. The meaning of Joan's story can be interpreted in several ways. Some authors romanticize Joan in her appearance. Others clutch the miraculous nature of her accomplishments. In St. Joan, George Bernard Shaw emphasizes Joan's charismatic nature and genius. He highlights his own opinion on Joan of Arc through the dialogue of other characters. Although the characters are Catholic, the lines that stand out to the audience, or at least the lines that stood out to me, do not hold an inherently religious purpose. As a priest I have gained a knowledge of the minds of the common people, and the you will find yet another most dangerous idea. I can express it only by such phrases as France for the French, England for the English, Italy for the Italians, Spain for the Spanish and so forth. It is sometimes so narrow and bitter in country folk that it surprises me that this country girl can rise above the idea of her village for its villagers. But she can. She does. But I know as a matter of plain common sense that the woman is a rebel, and that is enough for me. She rebels against nature by wearing man's clothes and fighting. She rebels against the church by usurping the divine authority of the Pope. Shaw depicts Joan as an extraordinary girl. He shows how characters from opposing sides speak about her. On one side, people attribute her abilities to God, and on the other to the devil. Shaw himself doesn't attribute them to either. Even when Joan's enemies are insulting her, Shaw is complimenting her. The lines of the chaplain and Cochon stood out to me. Through their eyes, what they're saying is an insult. Through a secular worldview, what they're saying is elevating Joan. She is before her time, she rebels against the system, and she sees the big picture. At first, I thought that the author was portraying Joan in a really like crazy way, trying to make her seem like this insane person, but my own perception of the character herself and how the author sees her changed over the course of the story. Shaw's vision for the story is made most clear in the preface to St. Joan. There are people in this world whose imagination is so vivid that when they have an idea, it comes to them as an audible voice, sometimes uttered by a visual figure. The diverse manners in which our imaginations dramatize the approach of the superpersonal forces is a problem for the psychologist, not for the historian. We may accept and admire Joan then as a sane and shrewd country girl of extraordinary strength of mind and hardihood of body. Everything she did was thoroughly calculated. And though the process was so rapid that she was hardly conscious of it, and ascribed it all to her voices, she was a woman of policy and not of blind impulse. She was very capable a born boss. G.K. Chesterton was an ardent Catholic and was very vocal about his beliefs. The difficulty of explaining why I am a Catholic is that there are 10,000 reasons, all amounting to one reason, that Catholicism is true. Chesterton portrays Father Brown as a modest protagonist. His genius isn't exaggerated like Jones in St. Joan. In the beginning of the book, it hardly felt like Father Brown was a main character at all. As I got to know his character better, I noticed the pattern. Before revealing an important clue, he likes to discuss deep philosophical and theological subjects. Father Brown's deduction skills stem from his understanding of human nature. Has it never struck you that a man who does next to nothing but hear men's real sins is not likely to be wholly unaware of human evil? Even though religion plays a major role in his understanding, he believes it's bad theology to reject reason. Reason is always reasonable, even in the last borderland of things. I know that people charge the church with lowering reason, but it is just the other way. Alone on earth, the church makes reason really supreme. Alone on earth, the church affirms that God himself is bound by reason. Even when discussing everyday things, Father Brown is able to introduce subjects that are simple but profound. Have you ever noticed the sad people never answer what you say? They answer what you mean, or what they think you mean. All language is used like that, you never get a question answered literally, even when you get it truly.
He also talks about crime and evil in ways that I've never even considered. A crime is like any other work of art. Don't look surprised. Crimes are by no means the only works of art that come from an infernal workshop. But every work of art, divine or diabolic has one indispensable mark I mean that the center of it is simple, however much the fulfillment may be complicated. We are taught that if a man has really bad first principles, that must be partly his fault. But for all that, we can make some difference between a man who insults his quite clear conscience and a man with a conscience more or less clouded with sophistries. Men may keep a certain level of good, but no man has ever been able to keep on the level of evil. The road goes down and down. P.K. Chesterton, unlike George Bernard Shaw, didn't have the goal of elevating his character, and he didn't focus just on his achievements. He was focused on how he saw the world, especially uh, with his ideas about reason, with his ideas about the human condition and religion, all things like about philosophy. So he was very focused on introspection uh, and how that affected his ability to deduce and uh, his own intuition about things. It was very interesting to see how George Bernard Shaw and G.K. Chesterton portrayed Catholicism. Uh, mostly it was interesting because there was a giant gap in the time period and it was a very long time ago. So uh, I know historical facts and stuff about what was going on way back when and when people were getting burned at the stake and stuff. But even though it was dramatic and kind of funny, it personalized history a little bit more for me. And uh, G.K. Chesterton's work didn't do that same thing for me, but it helped me understand a little bit more about Catholicism than I had already known.